Hello Striders, Dan here. I actually have a new studio, so I would like to think, I'd like to know what you think about the audio right now. Right now I do have some echo, I think, but I do have a new microphone, a new pop filter and a new room. So let me know what you think of the sound. I'm playing Bogles in Popper. There is a deck tech video, it should be published right before this one. Altaran 2 is my opponent. I have played Ixalan draft live actually. So I'm a little interested in playing Ixalan. Look at this, no creature. The, the question then is, I think I mulligan all hands with no creatures. But do I mulligan a hand with two abundant growths and no creatures? What are the mulligan rules for Bogles? I think this deck mulligans horribly. So I'm gonna try to keep it. He plays first. I now have at least four chances to draw a creature before it gets bad. If he's playing Mono Blue Delver, I'm now scared. Because Mono Blue Delver has a much better matchup than uh, Red Blue Delver. But uh, Island Preordain can be anything, right? I wish this card was Old Spirit Link. There, look at that thing! Coming for the opponent. And I am good. I will just play Ledge Walker when he cannot counter. Days will screw me up terribly, but I will not play around days. Uh, and I think I have enough cards to win with the Ledge Walker, actually. Uh, what I don't want to see now is a swamp. So you can edict. That would suck. I would love to see a uh, red mana. He could, if he, if he plays a Baron more, so he does have Edict. And that is of course terrible for me, I have no Edict protection now. So this could easily suck. Fortunately people don't play uh, uh, Diabolic Edict anymore because of Chainish Edict. Instants are even worse. So I can drop an ethereal armor here and just uh, like it. Check him for uh, for uh, stuff. He is looking for stuff. I think I play abundant growth ethereal armor here. Starting with abundant growth. He is looking for the edicts and he might very well find one. So I, I have to be careful here. But now I don't have to be careful anymore. So now I'm landing ethereal armor. I'm playing the glade cover scout, I think. And then I can pile everything on top of this guy. So now he has to do like Evan Cars Justice. And then Edict or Double Edict, of course. Uh, can I kill him next turn? Rancor Ethereal Armor, Ethereal Armor. That's 5 5. 13, am I right? I think, but if I fail to kill him, uh, I'm dead. Now uh, this is a pretty good card to play right now. So that we are playing. And then I play uh, Rancor. And uh, I'm ready for lethal next turn. Of course you can kill this guy with uh, the knight with a normal removal spell. And then play an edict. That's not unlikely. And then he wins. 
Uh, you can still play Disfigure and Chain Edict or uh, Doomblade Chain Edict. He's putting cards on the bottom and one card on top, which he draws. So maybe he has what he needs. I guess he does, which means that he wins. But I'm gonna see that before it's my turn. If I get on tap now, I think I won. It is not unlikely at all that he has this figure. And now he changes Edict. I should have gone for the kill. But I don't think I could have gotten to it. And I think I can just concede here. Uh, that's a little weak. I can still play something now, but I don't have anything. So he wins. Uh, I guess this becomes a lot better with uh, uh, the Young Wolves. Oh, a Glade Clover Scout. Ta -da! Can I concede now if he counters it? Yeah, I think I can. Uh, we do want Young Wolves. Do we care about anything else? We don't care about Lifelink. Uh, what's... Uh, I think the Pilgrims are too slow here. What else do you board out against control? Maybe a mana. Yeah, I'm gonna board out a forest. Call me crazy, let's do this! As I said in the deck tech video, I played this deck maybe 30, 40 times. I did the I did the deck tech video, the great interview with Deluxe Coif. Check it out, Pauper Walkthroughs uh, Hexproof. Or just yes, search for Pauper Walkthroughs Deluxe Coif. He went into great detail on this deck in 2013. And uh, it was fantastic. Deluxe Coif, great Pauper mind. Here we go for round two. We hate playing against blue black control that is a nightmare for us and that was not what we wanted to run into here i'm gonna go uh bogle i guess and then give it rancor or something like that and suffer he takes a mulligan we really want to draw a young wolf Uh, I choose to play green, pay green. <laughs> That's what I do. Come on now, blue black boy. I really hope I do a land here. So I can play ledge walker, but I can play young wolf. That's awesome. And uh, I guess that's what we are doing. Oh god! I sorry about that. Too much F2s. Uh, now we should do very well here. Rancor. Ethereal armor. Attack with all creatures. He should have been much lower. Uh, with Diabolic Edict, you could like time normal removal against Young Wolf and Edict. But with Chainers, you really have to kill Young Wolf twice. So sideboarding is working great here. And he has two turns to live. Now he can live longer than that. He is taking Ethereal Arm, of course. Which means that he lives a long time. Oh, abundant growth. 
draw a card, play that. Swing with the team. And hope he doesn't have Evan Cars Justice because Evan Cars Justice. And oh god, sorry. Got a new phone. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, I had a new, new phone. I got it today, actually. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna stick with this. Let me know what you think about the cards I boarded out. Of course, I wanted Young Wolves in. I feel Helios Pilgrim is very slow in this matchup. Uh, Lifelink doesn't do that much because we are not racing. Maybe I could have taken out an Armadillo Cloak instead of a Forest. Let me know what you think there. That's probably better. Uh, but fortune favors the idiot. And I am going to keep this hand. Which is actually a pretty great start against this deck. And I got Young Wolf out before it can be counterspelled. And uh, Rancor perhaps. If he doesn't have untapped mana. Otherwise he has the Bandit Growth to do into more land. But now I have to be wary of removal. Rancor I can play if he doesn't have untapped mana. But he is ending the turn like this. Uh, so now I think I'm just playing Abandoned Growth. Drawing an extra card, finding a land. There is the Bogal. But uh, not much is happening here, so that's a problem. If he can just sit back and do nothing all the time, then I do have a gigantic problem. Now he can reach double blue and be able to counter my Bogle. So I might actually have to bait that. But he is playing Chittering Rats. Uh, I am putting back Armadillo Cloak. This allows me to get Bogle Rancor into play. Is that what I want to do? Uh, Chittering Rats can still kill Bogle, but that's not a big problem. I think it is Bogle Rancor. Now that I can. Or even Bogle Cartouche. To get even more creatures into play. But do I need more creatures? Uh, what does Katush do? First, first strike. That I like that. Okay, now I have a fair amount of edict protection. Unfortunately, they don't play crypt rats. When we play trinket control, uh, crypt rats and edicts was death for Bogels. That was one of the best matchups because of crypt rats. I don't expect to see Cryptas from any deck that plays an island this early and has double um, uh, double blue spells. Now I got to go Abundant Growth Rancor. But uh, if I have to, I have to. Uh, Evan Cars Justice is still my main concern here. At this point, Evan Cars Justice is the game.
that would be terrible for me most terrible he has a very hard time uh, that works or oh, does it no it doesn't because it's a sorcery so double nausea works but or now he can just double edict uh, which is not unlikely and uh, that works of course double nausea that's pretty hard to fight Well, this just sucks. This is just one hit. Um, I'm gonna play Rancor Abundant Growth because I don't lose Rancor. And I start with Abundant Growth. See if. Oh god, that card is not what I want. But it's big now. If I can land it. But this young wolf is going to die. Uh, Ancestral Mass gives plus six plus six. Do I hear MTGU sounds? I shut off MTGU sounds an H is an H ago. Uh, Seagate Oracle. Wow. Surely has an edict as well. I'm tempted to play the Ancestral Mask. If you can't deal with it now, why would you be able to deal with it next turn? But he's gonna play the Edict right now. Here it comes. And uh, I think I've lost. I didn't lose too many cards, but I really need to draw a creature. Now, this is why I feel it's a really, really big mistake. To play 14 creatures in this deck. Because this is how it ends. Against control. I did bring in 4 more creatures. So now I'm playing 16. But maybe I should have played the pilgrims. Just to have more creatures. Or maybe I should have played the 4th cartouche. Uh, of solidarity over lifelink. But now. We are fading fast. Or not fast. We are fading really slow. And this is, of course, really bad and boring. But this is terrible. But as I said, blue black control, super bad matchup for this poor deck. F6, F8. And now he doesn't have too many cards, but soon he will establish counter tyranny and be able to counter any creature I play. And that will uh, not be fun. The card drawing machine is already doing its thing. And this is one of the reasons I don't see going down to uh, Three or two chain edicts. I really don't like that because it's so powerful in this situation. He only needs one more mana to flash back his chain edict, and he's just crushing me here. I don't know what I need to draw to get out of this, but it's not gonna be fun. Of course, I'm just drawing the same card every turn, which is not going to help. Uh, Radiant Fountain, very nice. He has a three turn clock now. Uh, the sort of winning with uh, crap plan of black control in Pauper. And now he can flash back a change edict. And soon we'll meet. Oh, ghostly flicker! 
Uh, shouldn't you have done that in my... Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, that's it. He wins this match. Uh, which he should, because uh, that's terrible. I'll show you the deck list if you want to see it in list view. Uh, there is also the deck deck video, of course. So let me know what you think. Thank you for watching.